Hey, Motonauts. So Roger Harris asked a question on the Moto Forums right here. Roger Harris, the cool dog with the snorkel, asked a question on the Moto Forums. And uh, basically what he wants to do is you know, put uh, some trees on a plane using a surface particle generator and then use that information about where the trees are um, to feed into another surface particle generator to put grass everywhere but underneath the trees, which kind of makes sense because grass doesn't grow so well underneath trees. Um, and Dino, who's a moto dynamics nutcase, who's always doing <laughs> moto dynamic stuff, um, tried to answer him. And I think um, I just started screwing around here because I had a few minutes and I think I found a solution. So if you're interested in this sort of setup, here it is. I'll just go through real quickly. Um, there is one workaround. Surface particle generators are not working. So let me just undo everything here except the tree so let's say we had a <clears throat> a plane a surface particle generator if you remember takes a, a mesh as an input we're using this plane as a mesh and it just um covers that mesh in a fine sprinkling of particles and you have some uh, you know spacing parameters over here and you can also create a mask for it and, and add v maps or do whatever you want um so it's pretty cool and pretty useful. And I'm just using just 10 particles here to put some trees around it. And then uh, I've got another surface particle generator down here that I'm using for grass, right? So here's the prototype. And now I've got grass. And let me turn off this little mask here because I haven't gotten there yet. So grass is everywhere, but we don't want grass everywhere. We don't want grass to be underneath the trees. And so my thought was, eh, that's no problem. I'll just take this surface particle generator here, create an item mask for it, which I did down here. And inside of that surface particle generator, <clears throat> or SPG as we like to call them, is a constant uh, texture. And what's interesting, Moto has, if you look at the texture locator here, which is selected, um, over here, texture locator, at the bottom it says texture replicator, and there's a particle source. And that's for a workflow called texture bombing, where you can... You know, take any particle source, whether it's a particle system or a surface particle generator or a um, surface generator in the shader tree that generates particles and use that to place textures on something. You can use that as a land, you know, to texture landscapes or to put rust on spaceships. It's a very powerful thing, which probably deserves its own tutorial. But I'm going to try to utilize this to clear out the space underneath the trees. And what I want is just a constant texture, just a small... Um, constant value placed at each one of these points using the um, surface particle generator I used for the tree, right? So there's a particle, a tree particle, wherever, every, you know, there's 10 of them where each one of these trees is. That 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 trees, 10 particles, and it's going to put just a little disk, a little constant texture there. Um, but unfortunately, and I, I think this is a bug because I can't figure it out. Um, if, I, if I use this trees, this SPG, surface particle generator trees, as a particle source input, I get a dependency loop, and it, it won't let me do that. It's kind of like, um, I'm not even going to try to describe it. It's like, it's like going back in time and killing yourself, and then how can that be possible? Because there's a dependency loop. You can't go back in time and kill yourself, because then you wouldn't be around in the future to go back in time and kill yourself. Therefore, there's a dependency loop. Um, but I don't know where it is here. I don't really, it seems like a bug, but maybe it's a real thing. However, dependency loops can be avoided if I use, instead of a surface particle generator, I use a service generator. So if I have this at service generator and I use my service generator for my trees instead of my surface particle generator, so unhook that and trees are gonna go bye-bye. And let's put the trees back in using a surface generator here in the um, shader tree that's in this plane mask. There's a mask for the plane and the surface generator is sitting inside that mask and it's putting particles on this plane, just like the SPG did, very similar. Um, but it's I'm allowed to use that as this surface generator in the constant texture as a point source without it um, giving me the dependency loop. So if I, and then what I did is I just, I duplicated this guy um, here uh, this constant, I didn't duplicate, I instanced it and brought it up here in the, in the shader tree in the plane just to give me some color feedback. So if I hide the um, grass, I can see where this constant texture, I can see what this is doing. It's using the surface generator point source. So it's putting a little disk every place that this, uh, everywhere there's a particle, which the trees are also attached to. And the particle size I can change from like little tiny to, you know, 
really huge. And uh, like like that or four or two. So I picked um, just one and there's a little another control here called uh, fall off uh, gain which I can basically just the fall off from the center going outwards and I'm actually if I crank that up to 95 I get a pretty solid disc there. And so that's where I don't want grass to show up. So how do we do that? How do we clear out the grass? Actually, you know what? There's a couple cool things here. Random size. Let me just throw that in there. Get a little more nature -y randomization in those uh, discs. Um, okay, so I'm going to actually turn this off now. And then I'm going to turn the mask back on. At the bottom of the mask, I just have a flat constant texture, right? It basically um, is just giving me, this guy at the bottom is just giving me 100% everywhere for density, right? Particle density is the effect. So if I turn this on and I turn on my replicator grass, um, I'm getting grass everywhere, right? Grass everywhere in accordance to these uh, values over here in the SPG for the grass. Uh, but what I can do with my constant uh, using that uh, surface generator as a particle source, um, I actually set the blend mode to subtract. So it takes that 100% value and chops it out, subtracts it from that value, 100% value underneath. So it cuts those little holes out, these little disks, these purple things I'm using to visualize this, are actually in the particle density value, it's 100% value. Those disks would be 100% value down here. And if I set it to subtract and enable it, I am subtracting that 100% value from the flat, um, all-encompassing 100% value that's going over the entire plane. So I'm just punching holes in it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I like this little shader tree thing. This is different than other programs. I think it's just kind of a unique way of working. You've got these blend modes up here, which normally, you know, you wouldn't have in a strict nodal system. You'd have to add some additional nodes to do that. And, um, you know, you have an effect here. It's just kind of a different way of working, but that's, that's just me... Uh, liking the shader tree because I ain't the only person who likes the freaking shader tree. So there. Okay. So let's turn this guy back on and hey, there's no grass underneath there. That's pretty cool, huh? Although there's a little bit. I don't know why those guys are there. Beats me. Maybe there's some sort of a, some sort of I don't know. It's not really, there's no random motion on that. I don't know why there's a few uh, tucked in there, but for the most part, it works and it's procedural. So if I say, okay, you know what? I've got a uh, particle ceiling of 16 on these guys. Let me turn that to eight. And so now my trees are in different places, but you know, because this is this sort of procedural network, I'm still keeping the bases relatively clear. So that's kind of cool. Bump this up maybe. Uh, let's say I want a more uh, denser force, so I'll bring my average spacing down, you know, so, and uh, maybe my minimum spacing down to 0.2, and uh, give me some more of these guys. And yeah, now I've got more of a force. But anyway, it, it's adapting to um, what I have in there. So that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I would note about a surface particle generator, it's not as good as an SPG because all I'm getting is particle positions, right? So if I select this uh, noodle here, or link, whatever you want to call it, and press F3 because everybody knows by now that F3 is sculpted. and that's not at all what I wanted. I meant F4. F4 is set up. Press F4 and you can um, get my particle modifiers down here because I have my setup tab. And if I just do a random, like I've done in some of the other tutorials, you'll notice that uh, there's my constant texture. You see how that's the surface particle generator is flowing into the particle source here? That's that's just this down here, right? This guy right here, particle source. Um, it's just visible in the, right there, visible in the schematic because I had, I had double clicked that guy. So let me hide this, remove this node. And you go away, I don't wanna look at you. Um, but I've got this particle random modifier, you see it, scattered my trees all over all over hell because it defaults to this so let's turn that back to zero um now they're all back you know nothing is happening right got a bunch of zeros here if i if i let's say do 0.1 and 0.1 it's going to move these guys around a little bit yeah so what this is doing let me turn this back down just so you can see this is one of the things i'd like sort of fixed in moto so here's where you kind of can potentially run into some problems. Um, you know, we've got, crank this 
back up a little bit maybe. So you'll notice this is no longer working, right? You know, I've got trees, well, they're flying off the plane, but also these initial positions are only being read from the surface particle generator. So let's see if this works. Um, yes, yeah, so particle random modifier. So now it's back together, right? Because I need, if I, if I drag my uh, constant texture over here to the schematic and I mean, double click that, there's the texture locator. For the particle source, I don't, I, previously I had this, right? And it wasn't working because I had modified, with my PMOD, I had moved these trees later on and I was still getting this uh, disk position from the surface generator. So I want to use this as my particle source now and everything's back to awesome, except I have some trees flying off the edge here. Um, but one of the things you'll notice, if I just uh, bump this down so it's not so, it's such a big, uh, it's kind of back. Um, if I go to like uniform scaling and put scaling to like 500%, well, you should see like a huge change in the trees, but I'm not getting that because this service generator feeding into this random PMOD doesn't contain size or rotation information. So if I randomize the scale like that, or even the rotation, like I want to spin my trees around, I'm not getting that. I'm not getting anything from this input here. Um, that's why these surface particle generators are, are better, in my opinion, than the surface generator over here in the shader tree. Also, they're not beholden to the shader tree. Um, so I think they're a little more flexible. I don't know what the uh, dependency loop is though. So hopefully that's a bug because it'd be nicer to use these. Um, you can, of course, you know, if you want to do some randomization, you know, I would probably go like this and, you know, let's take this guy out. We don't need him. Thankfully, our replicators have some built-in randomization so I can randomize my tree rotation here and, and also randomize the scale of the tree a little bit here. So I could do some of that stuff in the replicator. I don't have to put in a random P mod. That looks kind of cool. Anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. And uh, Roger Harris will be so psyched when he sees this. Right, Roger? <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.